Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Only a Bag, a travel podcast. I'm Darcy Melton, and with me is... Nathaniel Mellor. Thank you all for coming back and listening. Yeah. And uh, before we get started, I want to wish Darcy a very happy birthday. Thank you. It's my birthday. Uh, and why are we recording this on your birthday? So y'all know... Uh, we from actually... the South, is that... If you guys didn't know that, it's the y'all. Is that what gave yes. you away? Um, <laughs> we So we actually recorded this podcast uh this past weekend and then we went to florence the next day two days later um and had not um hadn't published what we'd what we'd recorded and just decided that we needed to we needed to update so many things that uh we're recording this episode again yeah so it's now i mean we're trying to put them out on mondays Mm -hmm. and it's now wednesday so it's going to come out either tonight or tomorrow uh ideally tonight that'd be really cool um and so yeah no it's it's taken a, it's basically just i think we wanted to update like so many things that we had said because we realized we went during covid mm-hmm. not like in the height of it at all it was sort of at the very it was just at the end of um restrictions being yeah. sort of lifted yeah i mean already it was like no more masks or anything like that however i think there was a kind of a really big difference between sort of pre and post covid and so we wanted to sort of give more up-to-date information in this episode we also went in the fall um that's a very good point time. that's a very Both, good point all all of the previous times that we'd been to florence were in the fall this was in obviously the height of summer it's now august but we went on the last day of july so yeah it, it, different energy different things were open yeah and the place had, had a more like lively feel i think a more maybe more touristy feel but more lively feel it was packed yeah. it was packed um and before we get started with any of that we're no longer running ads so instead of listening to an ad break right now instead we're going to be um, sort of advertising uh, our affiliate links. And the first one we have today is Trainline. It's how we buy our tickets uh, on the train or buses throughout Italy. There's a website um, in the description below. If you use the link uh, that we provide, we'll get a little percent back. I think it's like one or two percent back of the but ticket sale. But it's helpful. Sale. It really helps us out. But it's incredibly helpful and we really, really appreciate it. The website's in English. You can find all the, the tickets you're looking for. Um, and yeah, if you're going to go anywhere around Italy, we hope that you use our link. Mm-hmm. Um, as always, if you enjoy this episode, if you enjoy the podcast, we would love it if you were to follow us on Spotify and leave a review on Apple or Google or wherever you are listening to this uh, podcast because mm-hmm. it helps us out tremendously. It really does. Um, we had no idea. That's why we haven't really asked for this before, but we were like, apparently, like with the one time somebody leaves a review, it's like, oh, well, that really helped. Um, so here, call to action right at the beginning. With all that being said, uh, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the food in Florence. The food in Florence is a beautiful topic, I think. It is. I'm very excited. Do you want to talk about uh, classic Florentinian food first? Yeah, I think that's a really good place to start. Um, And I think there's really just two worth mentioning. Uh, I mean, sorry, if you're like a Florentinian food expert, there's probably hundreds. But um, the two main ones and the ones you'll probably see the most on your trip are going to be the Lamprodotto or Tripa. It goes by both names. And there's always the uh, Florentine steak or the Bisteca alla Fiorentina. I always mess it up, apparently. Uh, <laughs> the Fiorentina, it's the R, it always gets me there. Um, and that's just the sort of classic Florentine steak that you, I mean, I will be served in restaurants even in America. I mean, it's a very classic steak, I feel like. It is, but if you've had it in the States, I haven't, so I can't say. It might be different here. Um, I mean, they, meaning everybody who makes it here in a at least a professional sense, all the chefs uh, make it very specifically and source it very specifically. Well, I think that's something to go ahead and yeah, mention very briefly is there's a whole kind of culture around a lot of these foods that are like where they're sourced from, right? And like where they're yes, um, like how they're seasoned and how they're what you know grown and whatever. Uh, and and I think the Florentine steak is no different. It's um, it's from the uh, well, it's supposed to be from the Chianina. Uh, cattle or, or cow mm-hmm. uh and it's supposed to be basically it's like i think it's a sirloin or it's ba- it's a t-bone steak essentially yeah um bone in bone in uh and ideally i'm using inches here it's about an inch to two inches thick depending on yeah kind of where you get it's it but thick. there's yeah and there's rules on like it can't be it can't be less than 500 grams the steak itself it has to be uh i mean like that's like the minimum uh so it's about a pound um and then normally it's served anywhere between one and 1.5 kilos and that's like two to three pounds basically um and then they have this whole bit on like you know how you cook it it has to be based you know it has to be right over the coals it has to be you know uh two minutes aside three minutes and it's, aside it's, it has to be 
grilled, right? On charcoal? The, it's like, yeah, grilled on charcoal. And it has yeah. to, like, it had the, like, there's a whole, uh, the Maillard effect, um, which is like, I guess, it's, I think it's Maillard, Maillard uh, effect is when it um, sort of uh, creates that uh, crust, for lack of a better word, basically. Is it like caramelization? It's kind of like caramelization, okay. yeah. Um, between, I think, like, just the, 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 the fats and the proteins. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a kind of a, I don't know, it seems very specific. It seems like it's not just, like, grilled in a pan because they're very, very, um, I guess, uh, like, you can't use, like, gas ovens. You can't use electric. You can't use, a, you know, a Skittle. It's, like, it has to be grilled, um, which I guess in a restaurant you just have a little grill in the back. Not in the back of the, I mean, in the kitchen. It's yeah. just they have a charcoal bit. <laughs> not, like, out back in the alley. Yeah, not out back. But, um, which, but also the, the cow that they use has to be a certain age, right? It's something like 17 months or something ridiculous. It's, yeah. like, a, you like, know, a year and a half, basically. Um, I think. Actually, I don't know anything about uh cattle and beef but that seems young to me it seems really young but i also know nothing about meat so i have no idea some of you our dear listeners might know a lot more about the age of meat um and i think it's supposed to be finished like when you finish cooking it they basically stand it up on the bone and cook it for about six to seven minutes Mm -hmm. uh there's a whole thing about how you're not cooking the inside of the steak you're simply warming it up so it's not cold um and we found that a lot of like the restaurants in florence we're Typically, we're vegetarians, so we haven't actually tried this, mm-hmm. um, but we have learned uh, from asking around that a lot of restaurants in Florence, you typically can choose which cut you want. Uh, like, I mean, there have these, uh, when you walk Sides into a restaurant, yeah, yeah, basically these slabs of beef, and you go, you know, you can choose, like, here's the cut I want uh, from which flank. Um, I don't really know meat terms. Yeah, I, I, just, I just threw side in there. I don't yeah, know if that's hoping correct. hoping that one's on, on the board. <laughs> um, so there is a, it's a bit of a picking and choosing involved for sure. Um, however, they typically only cook it like blue rare to rare. Um, some places will go a little bit like medium rare, but you some I guess we've seen a lot of restaurants that will even make a joke about it, but they won't go over medium. Um, joke meaning like they'll put a little sign outside saying yeah. like, don't come order this if you're going to ask for it. Anything more than rare, it's yeah. Not and if it's happen. like well done, it's like we're calling the cops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a little bit of like that kind of thing, but it's. But they're serious about it because it won't, it won't be cooked more than rare. Yeah. Medium's so I, not going to happen. Well done, absolutely. Yeah, not. and I think that's something to just consider. Like it's um, just. I mean, I think if, if you're like the whole customer's always right thing that we have in America doesn't really extend here. Absolutely not. So it's especially <laughs> when it comes, I think, to the Florentine steak. They're like, we'd rather you leave mm-hmm. and sell the steak to somebody who else yeah and i think it's something about um respecting the meat and respecting tradition you know that absolutely they hold it to a very specific standard i think no absolutely and it's all about like that sort of you know i mean part of italy is it's always been done this way and it always will be done this way um which isn't always great no but it's the way they do things and and sometimes it's that's how it should be done i think yeah Oh. No, and I mean if you and if you like rare steak, honestly, you're gonna have a blast. We we did go through her mom, mm-hmm. and she does not like rare meat. Right, um, so she did not have any. But uh, we looked at it, and it looks really good. <laughs> uh, and if you're thinking, if you're concerned, like a pound of meat, two pounds of meat, three pounds of meat seems a little much. Uh, it will be offered you almost always as like a um, sort of an entree for two, kind of not an entree. Yeah, it's like it's a plate not, to share. It's like is what it is. Share, and, yeah. and a lot of the restaurants will have like the on their little specials board outside um their deal or yeah. whatever it is and it usually is the bisteca alla fiorentina two glasses of wine sometimes it'll come with contorni um one well, thing that's something else to mention is although it's a huge piece of meat it is still kind of falls in a lot of the florentinian or excuse me a lot of the italian way of eating which is uh, the antipasta the pasta or the, the primo um, the meat, which is a secundo, and mm-hmm. then you have the contorni afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so you still like, they'll still say like, okay, what pasta do you want? What antipasta do you want? What, uh, you know, sides would you like? Um, mm-hmm. so it's not like, I mean, the good, the better restaurants, like good and above, I should say, uh, will not have stuff on the side of your bisteca alla fiorentina. They'll have, yeah, it's not like a not. side of potatoes or something like that. It's not like it doesn't come with things. It's just the meat. Um, but if you really like meat, have no fear. They are also intended for one person to eat. So if you would like to sit there and um, have three pounds of meat, yeah, yeah absolutely. I that. mean, that's the place to do it. Uh, I think that pretty much covers. I mean, the, the sort of basics of the bisteca alla fiorentina. I think so. Okay. So yeah. the other one is lamprodotto. Yes, lamprodotto or tripa, which is a uh, tripe, and that well, it's similar to tripe. Tripe, I guess, is any 
animal stomach or any cow stomach? I think it's any animal, like pig, lamb, okay. sheep, cow. And tripa or lamprodotto is the fourth stomach of a cow. Yeah. Um, which I think is interesting. And not sure what's going on with the other three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but again, very specific food, these Italians. That's the thing. Very specific food. Um, you know more about it than I do. I don't think so. I mean, I might. I, I have. We both looked at these things I mean, because we, you know, you, you, I think it's one of those things you'd go to these places and you're like expecting to find cultural food and then you're like, hmm, it's going to go to Scotland and then they start offering you weird cuts of meat and you're like, I don't know if like I trust haggis? this. Like haggis. We exactly. never had real haggis in Scotland. We had the vegetarian haggis. Which was delicious. Shout out to the haggis box. This yes. is not a Edinburgh episode, but, but it's great. Shout out to the haggis box. Um, no, it's, it's so basically Lamprodotto is essentially how it's cooked is they stew or boil. Um, I think stew is a better word. Boil makes mm-hmm. it sound weird. Uh, the stomach usually for like eight to 12 hours with like celery, onions, salt, pepper, seasonings of sorts, a lot of um, spices um, until it kind of makes like a, a quite a hearty stew. Mm-hmm. And then more often than not, I mean, you can have it as a bowl for sure. Uh, there's like a bowl of yeah, Lampard it's served as a, as a bowl, yeah. Um, but it's really common to have it um, with a, as a sandwich. So what they do mm-hmm. is they kind of, you know, take out a piece or two of this stomach, um, bring it over to the cutting board, chop it up into little bits, stick it onto a sandwich, uh, and then they typically finish with like what they call salsa verde, which is, I guess, just green sauce. Um, and here, it or not here, but I guess Italy has... It's a different salsa verde than like anywhere else um, in the world. Yes, yeah. It's probably not the salsa verde that you're thinking of. Well, it certainly wasn't the one I was thinking of when I heard salsa verde. Well, I think so because um, as Americans, I think we're used to like the the sort of South American Mexican version of salsa verde, which is like a, a tomatillo based like salsa verde, or like could be jalapenos, but I think most of them are tomatillo. Hmm. Um, but here, it's a basically a mixture of like parsley and oregano and a handful of herbs. Um, anchovies, uh, olives, capers. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like, think salty, savory, and herb. I think garlic is in there, so some fresh garlic's in there. So it's supposed to be quite like. Um, like sharp. To yeah, like bat, picante. The fatty. Like, yeah, yeah. And, which I guess here they use the word picante, not to mean spicy, but sharp. Like, sort of, uh, yeah, like almost like it'll be kind of like a refresh, refreshing because mm-hmm. otherwise you're having this really dense, really beautiful, uh, like seasoned sort of stomach, and then you're like, I need something. Kind of cut through it. Yeah. Um, And that's really, really common. That's like really popular street food in Florence. Almost everywhere that makes sandwiches has Lampradotto. Um, There's like Lampradotto boxes. Uh, Like one is near the Dante Museum. It's a famous one. Um, Meaning like a food truck? A food box, yeah. Food box. Okay. But not, I guess whenever I hear box, I think of like it's served in a box. But you mean more like it is a... The structure is a box. structure where you can purchase your Lampradotto. And it's served in a little sandwich. Yeah. Um, but also, again, if you like if you like the idea more of eating it out of a bowl or you can't eat gluten uh, or, or wheat, um, then they do the same thing in a bowl. So you can just have it like as, as a little stew with the salsa verde, I believe, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the two very classic, um, very common foods in, in Florence. And if you are, if you do eat meat, uh, if you're vegetarian, obviously, good luck. That's not available for you. Yeah, um, neither not... of those are things that we vegetarians can eat. Yeah. Um, uh, but there's lots of other great food. It's oh, there's fine. Lots of amazing yeah, those food. are just, yeah, we'll those get are to just that. typical. Do yeah. not worry. But if you do eat meat and those sound good, you can find tons of them in Florence. And, and I hope that you do, you know, at some point uh, try them when you're there because that's like classic Florentinian food. And I think yeah. sometimes other towns don't really have classic food here. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Absolutely. So now that we've covered the classics... Well, one other oh, classic that I just I do want to give... It's more of a warning, is that oh. um, bread that you purchase, uh, uh, yes. meaning not like necessarily at the grocery store. No, not like all, the grocery store. Well, I guess I mean, it's not like packaged bread off the shelf. It's not sliced Sandwich bread that we're bread. talking yeah, about. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, but at the grocery store bakery, um, which are typical here, and any panificio which, or, or forno, which are both um, places that you can buy bread... Uh, it's typical in Florence to make bread without salt. Um, usually there is a, there is an option for with salt, but you might have to ask. Um, but they were part of the salt wars. So in a long time ago, they stopped putting... What is it, like 1600s? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think that's about right. Uh, they stopped putting salt in, in the bread. Because the uh, Pope was taxing salt. And mm-hmm. they're like, you know what? We don't need to use salt. And he was like, good luck. It's going to taste terrible. And he was right. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. It's not a. Ama- I'll be honest. If you haven't, if you like bread and you bake bread and you forget to put the salt in bread and you're like, God, that's not good. You know exactly what we're talking about. Yes. Um, because I feel like 
I, we bake bread quite often and then we forget to put salt i forget to put in salt all the time all the time it's like i don't know what is going on in my head and i'm just like oh there, there's another loaf 30 minutes in the oven without any salt in. i tried to do like a salt wash afterwards to make up for it and it's not the same um but yeah they will you will not be able to find uh well actually i think like a big warning is the whole bread on the table thing isn't that common in italy i mean oh the bread basket thing yeah, yeah tuscany is probably the only region where i've ever actually like seen it and and i don't think either of us know if it's a traditional thing or a like I don't know, new recent we tourist. We bread thing. on the table when we went to Bracciano the other day. That's a good point because you know what I, I you know I, I will say take that back because it comes with certain dishes in the rest of Italy, um, like in the south where we are, you you don't get bread on the table when you arrive, like you do like you know. American oh yeah, restaurant. it's not like a munching before lunch or dinner. Thing. Yeah, it's, it's usually a, to, go... s- to scoop up the extra bits when you're done eating. And especially I think if you have like. Um, because if you go to like Tavolo Caldo, which are like hot tables, it's a bunch of like hot, ready to eat food kind of thing. Like it's all made there. It's all usually really delicious. Um, but you'll notice too, like sometimes if you get the vegetables, they put some bread on the side. Or if you get like um, the meatballs or whatever, you know, chunks of chicken, uh, mm-hmm. they usually stick a couple of pieces of bread on the side. So it's like if you're getting a pasta dish at a restaurant in the South, for probably instance, not, yeah. you're probably almost not. certainly yeah, not going to get bread on the table. Mm-hmm. But You if, can ask for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. it's not necessarily going to come with it. So I think that's the thing in Bracciano that we, we did get the bread, but it's like, I think the few times we ate in a restaurant in Florence and Siena, it was like, as soon as we sat down, it was like bread on the table. Yeah. And it's a little bit like, oh, I wonder if it's something they've done for, because, but in Umbria, which is a bordering, uh, it's the region bordering uh, Tuscany, we lived for a, a little bit in, in Perugia, which is the capital of Umbria, and the number of times we went out to eat, I don't think they yeah, ever... Yeah, we put... didn't get bread then. Yeah. That's an interesting point. I hadn't really thought about that. So it's hard to tell. We should do some research on that and do some bread on the table episodes. We should tell you bre- bread on the table sounds like a great name for a podcast. Yeah, Spin it really does. Podcast, everybody, and a bread cookbook. on the table. Oh my God, I hate the <gasps> empire starting right now. Okay, one more note though about bread. Uh, this is an Italian note. Uh, I think it goes for all of Italy, but uh, in a lot of the world... I think, at least maybe where we're from, you get a piece of bread and you put it on like a little tea bread plate. plate, bread plate, yeah, um, or on your plate with your food. But in um, in Italy, often you will see people take their little slice of bread or piece of bread out of the basket, communal table bread basket, and just put it on the table next to their plate. I don't know where that tradition started, but that's what they do, so... Heads yeah, up. it's like, and it might not be a very clean <laughs> table, but that's a risk you're willing to take, I hope. And that's to say, you don't have to participate in that. Not that's at all. just the fun fact. And no one's going to like be like, oh, that person has their bread on the plate. What a weirdo. I don't think that's the thing here. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it, by and large, I don't think we've ever done anything that's really offended anyone in this country. Well, I think like and maybe some things that possibly we should have started with is simply like the whole like salt and pepper You're, it's rare to find salt and pepper oh, on the table yes. um like i mean if, if that's kind of like one of those we were going to do this whole episode and how you can tell a touristy restaurant from a not touristy one the whole like if the menu's in english touristy restaurant if um you can see condiments salt pepper and then like god forbid like ketchup or something like that on the table absolutely a touristy restaurant um because really like amazing and local and like uh, homey, home style, mm-hmm. like kind of uh, restaurants that we've been to. Um, no, it's like you eat the food as it comes out. Um, and I say that because it's like Italy, I think by and large, does not prioritize salt in their food. I think it's in many ways, it's almost quite French that's, in that sense. Yeah, that's a good point. Because um, I think we, we get, we sometimes when we come back from the States to here, it feels like everything's quite undersalted. But then after being here for a few months and going back to the States, Everything seems super salty in the States. Yeah, it yeah seems you just like, have to wow. adjust your palate. Um, That's not always the case that you will have it on the not. table. You might have some very, yeah. Oh, oh I was oh. thinking that, yeah. I, I mean, say. yeah, you might also have some very salty dishes. But I was thinking sometimes we have been to places that I think are quite homey uh, in a good way. And they do have like the little caddy with um, like the spicy oil. And then that is the, a very good point. And then a the little bit of olive oil, maybe, um, maybe salt, salt or pepper. So it, that's not a hard and fast rule that if you find that on the table you're at a very touristy, inauthentic restaurant. It's just not that common. Like, it's it's just not going to happen everywhere. Well, it's the spicy oil is a thing, too. That's like, it's a little mm-hmm. basically pepperoncino and, and olive oil. Or, uh, I maybe, think olive oil. Okay, some kind of oil. Because um, I know the worst ones are like just uh, sunflower soy, seed. Sunflower yeah. seed, yeah. Um, and that's like, they, a lot of people pour it on like their pasta and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. But that, I guess that is, yeah, that definitely stands apart in the sense of it is a condiment on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, so all those are to say simply that like, yeah, it's it's... 
you're not going to make too many faux pas. Um, and, and people are very happy to sort of like fulfill your requests. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well with um, some, some sandwich shops that do. Um, especially if you're, you know, gluten-free and stuff like that, or you can't eat certain things. Um, because a lot of what I appreciate is in like a lot of the places we've been in Italy and compared to the States, it's like it isn't made a lot of stuff. It's like kind of made um, when you order it. Yeah. Like even today, we it's went not to this. It's pre-made, yeah. Yeah, we went to this. We were like, uh, went to this market for food and um, they were making the carbonara, the pasta carbonara, which is like, um, it's egg and guanciale, which is like pig, um, it's like pig cheek or a lot of people use pancetta. Um, and he's making it fresh. So it's like every single bowl it's like he's you know refrying the pinch or refrying the guanciale the pancetta mm-hmm. re-whisking together the eggs um so it's interesting it's like if you wanted to make it without the you know the the meat basically if you wanted to make it out of the meat like a vegetarian version he could do, do that because he's making mm-hmm. it fresh for you mm-hmm. um so aside from the florentine steak most of which they will not change oh for yes you. they would definitely not change that yeah. for you. yeah um and some some chefs might be offended if you ask them to um most of the time uh, you're, I don't think you're going to offend anybody. Yeah, I think it'd be good. So if anyone's listening and you're like, oh my God, I can't go. They have it very specific. By and large, they, I think people, I think Italy, like Italians in general, uh, would like to make people happy. I mean, I think they're Which like... Which very amicable yeah. people usually. Well, I think, and we've always had the experience, okay. especially when it comes to food, that people are like, I'd be happy to sort of slightly alter it in a they way They just that want you, to share their yeah, food and their culture. Yeah, absolutely. Anything for you to enjoy it. Um, so now that we've talked about that, some very basic ground rules and some classic <laughs> foods... Uh, let, what are we talking about next? Sandwiches. Ooh, okay. Do you want to take this take this away? Yeah. So first, um, maybe we should talk about Alantico Venayo. Okay. Um, because that, when you look up, you know, I don't know, best sandwiches in Florence or best bang for your buck, cheap eats, uh, street food in Florence, that will likely come up uh, in your search, I think. I think it's the number one. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was the number one on TripAdvisor in the world. Is that why it got so famous? I think that's why it got so famous. I mean, it got famous and then it got famous, sir, or, I guess yeah. is what we're saying. But I think it was like number one in Florence and then be like, just kept getting more and more reviews. And they're expanding into, well, they, they expanded essentially. So they expanded into like three different shops on the same street in Florence, right? And they now have two locations in Rome. They, I think they're in Milan as well. Yeah, the and now they're moving over to the U.S. There's one There's already in New York. One in New York. And, and they're expanding to L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, lots of Al Antico Venayo. Um, we, have, uh, we haven't been, actually, because the, the first few times we were in Florence, the lines for these all three restaurants on the same street, uh, in, within a stone's throw of each other. That's Not how even, they, within, like, you could touch... I mean, the two of them were touching. Yeah, that's and true. And then one and the was right, right across the street. street. Yeah, so within a um, spit of each other. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Well, they, their lines were crazy. Oh, yes. So the lines were massive, like around, literally around the block. That's not a, that's not an exaggeration. And I think I mean, like, and in terms of like yards and feet, I guess, I'm, I'm just trying to think of it like in terms of like football field, mm-hmm. easily easily it was basically 50 yards wrapped around like i mean back down the street and then wrapped around yeah uh, and hundreds this, of people yeah and this isn't like a, a pedestrian street i mean it's a car street yes so you just had people in the street mm-hmm. um and then you had four or five people working for al antico with mm-hmm. like, like the little clipboards and, and vests, little, like yeah reflective vests getting people into lines like and, and it was hard to figure out if they were Asking people what they wanted and then getting them into an appropriate line, saying, like, if you want that sandwich, it's in that line. Or if mm-hmm. they were simply counting out, like... How many people and managing yeah. the line length or something like that. That way, like, nobody's in. Because I think we... Went, and maybe to, like, as we segue this, um, <laughs> very seamlessly, um, <laughs> this time we noticed there's only two of the three locations were open. I mean, mm-hmm. the other one was just simply, like, I guess not enough people, so they were kind of closed for the day. Mm-hmm. But one was, like, ridiculous. It was, like, you know, 70 people. And the other one was, like... 50, 10, 15, maybe. Yeah. And so it wasn't, it was unclear if it was like the original location and then the new one. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of people were just like, I trust the original one more. Because um, I think the original one, and I'm using that in air quotes, but you guys can't see me because uh, <laughs> this is an audio form. Um, <laughs> the one that was the original had like a chalkboard with mm-hmm. the the, uh, the menu versus the one next door, which it had like, printed out on a, on a wall. Um, so I do wonder if there's something like 
if there's something even on TripAdvisor that we just haven't seen that's basically like, they're all good, but go to the original one if you're there because yeah, it's like know. somehow better. Mm-hmm. Like the master works there and the, the pupils work hmm. across the street. Yeah. Um, but we haven't actually been there. We have not. And our advice, uh, I mean, number one, if you want to go there, if that's on your list of must to do in Florence, absolutely do it. Um, if you don't want to wait in, in line as long and uh, have what I'm guessing is a very similarly tasty sandwich, um, you can go to La Schiacciata, um, which is on the same street. And La Schiacciata is the bread that they use for these sandwiches. And uh, it's the same kind of sandwich. They're both like a foot by a foot wide and tall, uh, giant sandwiches. And it's like, um, it's almost like a focaccia. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like it's more of a crispy focaccia. Yeah. Um, um, to clarify, though, it's the bread that all of Florentinian sandwiches use. The yes. Schiacciata. It's like yes. the, it's a classic Florentinian bread. So it's not just the name of the place happens to be called La Schiacciata, but it's like that's just the kind of bread, like sandwich bread that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's also for those of you who are intrepid and exploratory eaters, it both comes like I, I mean, you can get it as a just a, a pan sheet if you want, like to bring it you know back to your hotel room or something like that. You can go to bakeries and stuff like that to find it. Uh, it also comes sweet. Um, they'll actually kind of like uh, make, uh, put, I guess, raw grapes in there. And then when it cooks, it kind of gets mm-hmm. stewed in the bread. It's really um, good. It's, it sounds weird. It's so- like grapes in bread, not raisins, like yeah, full grapes. grapes. Yeah. Sounds weird, but it really is uh, quite delicious and unique. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a classic of the city. Yeah. So that's all its little background on the bread. I yeah. apologize. Take it away. <laughs> um, no, but Las Gachata, when we went, um, it was the time we went with my mom, I guess, and we needed a, we needed to not wait in line for a few hours for a sandwich. Um, so we went there, and it was it was great. I mean, giant sandwiches that tasted same lovely. Price. Same price. Which is, what, five or six years? They were, I think, closer to seven or eight. Okay. They were, because they're, they're really big. They're really You're right. big. I mean, um, huge sandwich. I mean, this is easy, like... We, we, I think we, we keep in every episode we've ever made, we're like, we don't have kids, but we don't have kids, but maybe consider like splitting one with it. Like if you have a kid, like it's, I don't know. It's like sometimes we're seeing kids holding them and I'm like, it's just like so much food. They're going like, to fall asleep before they finish. We did see a finish. baby double fisting sandwiches. Uh, that's a good point. We saw this Monday. baby. It was just like it one sandwich each hand. It's the same sandwich. It was like he wanted to like, try his mom's sandwich. Mm-hmm. And his mom was like, it's the same sandwich. But he's like, no. He's like, so he kept taking a bite of one and mm-hmm. a bite of the other and a bite of one and a bite of the other. So. He could not have been maybe two years old. It was amazing. It was just, it's like a sandwich aficionado happening. Yeah, just like so. being born right there. It's like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. This... So maybe your kids get a whole sandwich themselves. Maybe, maybe they get, maybe kids they do get, get a whole sandwich. Maybe, maybe they get one chopped in half or in quarters. But that um, was just more to say, like, not that your child cannot handle a sandwich. No, more but, just... <laughs> but it's a lot of food. You and I, and I split one and it was like a full It was kind of like, each, wow, that was almost like too like. much. Yeah. It was, it was, we were both struggling to finish it at the end. Mm-hmm. But they have classic flavors, essentially. Um, Basically, it's like what? Cured meats and then cheese. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I think absolutely. Pretty... And I mean, there's, there are variations on that. Uh, different meats, different cheeses, uh, usually a couple vegetarian options, um, which is what we ate and it was great. Mm-hmm. And then all, there's often like, I mean, even the meats and cheeses is like they have arugula on some or pesto on some or like um, they do a lot of uh, vegetables under oil, like mm-hmm. so zucchini or eggplant, like it's called sotolio. So it's like, it's usually cooked, um, uh, it's usually like fried or cooked and then they kind of put it under vinegar and then they put it under oil. So it's like a fried, vinegary, oily um, like slab of eggplant or zucchini. Mm-hmm. And that usually accompanies some of these sandwiches because it kind of gives a little bit of like a sharpness that the, the sort of the, I don't know, the fattier meats sort of lack. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the schiacciata is, is, I think, a, if, and I guess to like, just to uh, recount, I guess, because what you're saying earlier is like, yeah, if this is a place you want to go, we 100% encourage you to go. This is to more... Alantico Vanaya. Yeah, to Alantico Vanaya. Yeah, so it's more of like if this is like it's been on my list for years, definitely go. This is not to urge you to not go. It is simply for those of you who are uh, sort of wary about missing out, like oh, I just don't want to wait in line for two hours for a sandwich um, while everybody in front of me is like just, you know, because part of it is everyone's like taking pictures. So it's kind of, it slows it down even more because it's not just like, let's get through and get sandwiches. It's kind of like everyone has to stop and pose and pictures. Oh, there's and... no seating either. That's, That's okay. So Al Antico Vanayo does not have seating inside. Um, you'll see a bunch of people either standing around with their sandwiches or sitting on the curb. Um, 
And La Schiacciata has limited seating, but there are some tables inside. It's definitely the place to go if you need to sit and you want a similar tasty, yummy sandwich at the same price in literally the exact same area. Yeah, um, and like 10 feet away. <laughs> like 10 feet away, no, almost no line ever. Um, yeah, I think that was, a, this is more just to say, it's not like, don't go to El Antico Benayo. It's just, if you get there and you're like, I cannot do that line, but I really want to know what that sandwich tastes like, right next door, there's a great alternative. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the only place. No, our favorite one is called uh, Da Vinatieri. And it is not on the same street, <laughs> actually. It is not at all. Um, but it is, what is it near? It's near Dante's Museum, which yes. is kind of a, um, that might not be like on a lot of people. I think uh, I'm speaking directly to my, our dear listeners. Um, I was going to say my friends. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's, you might not be going to Dante's Museum, so that's totally fine. Um, so it's a little bit like south of, like towards the river uh, from the Duomo. Um, it, it it's gonna be one of those things that's like it sounds confusing now, but once you're in Florence and you realize how small it is, then you're like, oh, this is impossible for places to hide. Yeah, um, definitely. But there's like Dante's museum. It's like Dante's church. Hilariously enough, if you ever take a walking tour, a lot of them go past Dante's church, yeah. and you and will past go past the, the, the shop. like Vinateria, Vinateria, Vinatieri, Vinateri. Thierry. Vina Thierry. It's like, it's, I don't think these are Italian words. I feel like these are like just some... They might, well, I was going to say they might be Florentinian words. But Florentinian be, is Italian. Yeah. <sighs> Italian's hard, y'all. Italian is hard. You know, you'd think we've been here for three years. You'd think we'd speak fluently, but we are... We're struggling. Muddling our way through it, for real. <laughs> um, but I do just, uh, before we go on about these amazing sandwiches, a note... Um, La Schiacciata and Alantico Venayo are near the piazza... No, the Palazzo Vecchio. Okay, so it's, which is, the okay, so the Palazzo Vecchio, there's the Piazza della Signoria, Signoria, Signor, Signoria, blah, 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 Signora, that's yeah. in the Piazza, which is basically almost kind of-ish touching the Uffizi area. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a kind of, there's a little, it's hard to, exp again, it's, we don't have a map, if there's like a video, I could just hold a little map. Um, but a lot of this is like, you know, connected in some way, so it's sort of and like. And the historical area of Florence well, oh, so tiny. It is the historical touristy area. Um, I say that as ha, ha, I say that as a tourist. Exactly. That's where most of us are going to be. I'm sure there are beautiful, wonderful places outside of and historical things outside of that area. But most of us are going to be in an, a very walkable, at least for us, um, easy, easy vicinity. Yeah, and a lot of those. I mean, we're gonna. I think we have one more sandwich place and a couple other recommendations, and they're all within. Um, they're all within, like the, again, the touristy area, but that's not in a bad way. It's just simply, uh, like... It's where all the big monuments are. That's kind of the thing, and, and a lot of people don't spend that long in Florence. We've found, um, I mean, we've even recommended as a day trip. We went on a day trip ourselves, um, but a lot of people spend maybe two days, three days maximum. Um, you could spend a lot more time you could there, definitely, obviously. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. but so a lot of these recommendations are going to kind of be in that area rather than, like, kind of far-flung, because I think our recommendations for, like, Rome, for instance, are... Uh, when we get to that part, will be not like around the Colosseum. It's going to be like no, it's like you know a ten minute bus ride. They are more far flung. Yeah, absolutely. to uh, some of the best food you're going to have in Rome, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, so let's talk about these sandwiches. Let's definitely get into it. Da Thierry. Um, they're super good. <laughs> nailed it. All right, let's move on. Um, and how much are they? They are all five euros. Yes, and there are several different options. Um, a lot of them are meat options. I think there are two or three which are vegetarian options. Um, I had one. We, we split one, and then I we went back twice the same day, and I got the same sandwich. This was on Monday, um, and it was what a, scum, a smork, uh, smoked scamorza, um, which is cheese, smoky cheese, and zucchini, and grilled zucchini, I think. Grilled zucchini and pistachio like cream is what they call it but it's just like but a, it's just a, not muddled up what do you call it like almost Ground. like a pesto of pistachio yeah um and it was delicious so so good and as far as the size thing goes they are not half the size of the what so you might find at la schiacciata or like uh alantico venayo they're a little bit bigger than that but they are um, more normal sandwich i will say they're more normal and it, it doesn't feel as um i mean i will i'll be honest like we we when we split one we're like that was good we should to totally get another one but then we went back later when we were starving and i think we both got to the end of the sandwich we're like oh my god thankfully we you know we got one each but like 
they weren't any bigger because it yeah, was yeah we just were sort slowing of, down by the last yeah, few bites. Yeah, it was getting really like okay, this is we can do it. Um, but very quickly, just like basic information, and then we'll kind of get into why we like the sandwiches. I guess mm-hmm. is um, there is some seating. It's a lot of it uh, in the summer and fall and probably spring. It's going to be stools outside on this little alleyway, um, which is not bad. I will say it's because it's usually half the alleyways in shade, mm-hmm. uh, depending on when you go. Um, but not like table seating inside. Yeah, no table seating inside. There are stools inside as well. But again, I, this is a very small little place. It's yeah, very, there's maybe very like five or six stools total. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's a little like kind of like marble counter on one side. Like it's like, it's, uh, I don't know, it's like a little shelf, I guess. And it's kind of where you can put like your sandwich or your, um, well, they also serve lamprodotto. And then above it, there's another smaller shelf where you can put your little cup of wine. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you see it, there's kind of two entrances. Or one's just a window, and it's just for lamprodotto and tripa. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really is delicious there. Like the first time we went, again, we haven't tried it. I'm saying it's delicious because the first time we went, we saw this guy like order the lamprodotto, and it came in a little bowl, and he was kind of not like that. He was just kind of like, okay. It doesn't look good. It looked, it when- was. I yeah. was gonna say actually one of the things it's called lamprodotto, which comes from the Italian word for for eels, Eel. yeah, because it looks like a like eels, um, so it doesn't quite look appetizing. Yes, I, think I don't think a... any anybody thinks it looks appetizing. Yeah, I don't think that's somebody's first thought is like that looks delicious. Um, but I mean, he he was like starting to eat it. I'm watching him eat it just because I, I kind of enjoy uh, watching other people eat food sometimes. Because I'm like, are they enjoying this? Or are they hating this? People watching, uh, I think, is a way. To yeah, that sounds that. way less creepy. Thank you <laughs> with people watching. Um, I like people watching. Um, but no, he like, he's eating this, uh, and, and then he like, it goes from this like total, like, I don't know, fear of what he's eating to like, this is actually really good. How is this really good? Mm-hmm. And then like, all of a sudden he's like, like, was like trepidatious with the first bite. And then, and then the second one was like, wow, this is actually really good. And then like ravagely, is yeah, that the word? Ravenously. Ravenously, ravenously yeah. like finishing this, this tripa. Yeah. And goes back for a second bowl and it was kind of just like, okay. He's the only person. I'm like, so we kept seeing people everywhere, kind of eating it. It's just it felt like ubiquitous. Like everybody, there's anywhere near one of those lamprodotto boxes or at any of these like sandwich places that have a lamprodotto. Sometimes a separate window, like uh, the vinateria, tria, vinatieri, vinatieri. Um, they might have a separate window, and so it's always like people. And mm-hmm. it, the expressions do range from like a little bit afraid. Um, to this is my normal lunch, so it's you know it's fine. To like this is the best thing on earth, and that mm-hmm. was like the first time I'd seen this is the best thing on earth. Um, um, and then so that's when we were just having the sandwiches. We still have not tried it, but if you're going to try it, I definitely recommend this place simply yeah. for that. And it is really cool because the the main entrance, the one door to the restaurant uh, or sandwich shop, it's more of a sandwich shop, I should say. You enter, and there's. Uh, you know, sandwich maker behind the counter and a bunch of meats in the little deli case and uh, tons of different like sauces that they make yeah. in-house, different things to put on the sandwich, different um, like sotolio vegetables and all these different things. Like, what do you call all the elements of a sandwich? Yeah, like not the condiments, but the extra bits, the mm-hmm. other bits. And then there's the window, like Nathaniel said, uh, where you line up to get the lamprodotto. And it's just kind of cool that we're, you know, different lines for different, you know, and families splitting up depending yeah, on who like, wants what. It felt yeah. a little more, it, and also I think in my experience and your experience, maybe I'm speaking for you, but it, every time we've gone there, there's always been locals there because it's always been yeah. kind of people who clearly know their way around it. Um, sometimes it almost feels like this, like sometimes people have a tab or something and they probably don't, it's probably they're paying, but it's like, just this very like as soon really, as they like, come jovial, up, jovial, chubby. Yeah, thing. it's like yeah. they're already getting served, and it's very like oh, so it's clearly like where people go to have lunch. It's people. It's clearly like a, um, I don't know, they're the normal spot for a lot mm-hmm. of people. Um, plus, they have like I think one euro, one euro fifty for a little glass of wine to I go think to your two fifty. Oh, it's gone up in Which price. Which is totally worth it. I just want. Oh, yeah, I would just sure. want to say I think it's two or two fifty something like that. Okay, so it's got a little up. Um, everything's gone a little up. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it's. Uh, but I mean, six six bucks. You said for the sandwich. Five. Five. Sandwich. Okay. Five. I mean, you can't beat it, and they're amazing. They're so good. Well, and and this time we met Simone, who's the uh, proprietor. What would you yeah, call the owner? owner yeah, I think we've actually seen him before a couple of times working. Uh, usually at the Lamprodotto window every time we went, uh, and this is the first time he's making uh, sandwiches. But it was really good. we went obviously in the morning and um, got the sandwich. It was great. We went back. He recognized us. He's like, he came back. How was it? And we had this whole conversation. Uh, and I explained, you know, I think or actually you explained that I, I'm like. Having this weird diet right now where 
I've been vegetarian for like five years, but I like need to do an exclusion diet. So I have to basically cut out everything I've been eating. And that leaves pretty much like some vegetables and meat. Um, I've been eating like cabbage, zucchini, apples. And chicken. And chicken. <laughs> And so I was a little like, you know, and we've had a bit, I'm having like a bit of a cheat day anyway, but I was like trying not to go like too, um, like much into like everything I'm not supposed to be eating. Um, and so I was like, you know, do you have, you know, Darcy was like, do you have chicken by any chance? Like, of course, yeah, because it's not on the board. Mm -hmm. And so he's just kind of like, I've got this, I got that. He's like cutting it up, trying some. He puts like some balsamic vinegar on one piece. He leaves the other one kind of as it is. And lets you try it. He's like, yeah, you tell me which one, whatever you like. And it was great. And he's like, okay, you want me to make a sandwich for you? Do you have any idea of what you want on it? I'm like, I just, yeah, whatever. You, Uh you tell me. Um, you just made this little custom sandwich. And in fact, when we went in the morning, uh, there were a couple parents picking up some sandwiches and they both just picked out a meat and uh, I think like a vegetable to go with it. And, and they were both like, yeah, you just, you tell me whatever sauce thing you think goes yeah, with it. Yeah, that's right. Because it was with the porchetta. Mm-hmm. He was like, whatever, whatever you think is the best. Yeah, just um, a sandwich master. And I did, I looked, actually looked at some reviews afterwards. I was very curious. And a couple of people had mentioned that like, you know, because they do have, I mean, you know, it's, it's. Italy, and if you've never been to Italy before, there are a lot of meats and sausages that are quite regional. Um, and I think there's one, and I just for the life of me do not remember the name. It's like fico nile, uh, f- uh, something to do with finocchio, which is fennel seeds. And I had never really heard of it before, uh, and it seems to be part of the region, uh, which is not surprising. I haven't heard of it before. I should say again, I don't eat meat, so I wouldn't have heard it. But you, you'll constantly see it in like stores, especially in the south. All the different separate, you know, different kinds of um, sausages they have and this one was kind of interesting because it's basically um, some kind of sausage just stuffed with a bunch of fennel seeds it looked like um, and that was like that was part of a sandwich and all sorts of other cuts and when I was looking through the reviews a number of people had said like you know I'd never heard of any of these things before and you know I was allowed to try like little pe- uh, little bits of, of a couple of them to figure out which one I liked which isn't entirely uncommon but it's also not that common depending on yes, like where you go agree. and how busy something is because there were some great sandwich places we've been even in uh, rome um but it's kind of like we're too busy and not set up in a way that we can slice off a little bit and give it to you uh you kind of have to know what you want going yeah. in um but this one really was it was it was really just kind of sweet because it was again going back to that sort of like wanting to make sure that what he gives you is the best possible thing that you will enjoy um, rather than like you know, fitting to one of the sandwiches that he like made because he I think he's and he's like so 20. excited. Well, he he it, it was kind of a slower day there I think so we saw him checking in with everybody at least once to see what they they thought and he got so excited when people weren't excited about what they were eating. Absolutely, it was yeah. so sweet. It felt it, and I think it's we talk about this a lot and it kind of goes back to that sort of um, I mean I'm happy for Alantico Venayo you know and they started in Florence and they've exploded beyond Florence and it's very exciting. It's like. Uh, you know, kind of, you you wish these people the best because you're like, you know, you, you're able to to make more than a living. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's also really kind of fun to find the places that are um, that are still in that kind of labor of love sort of um, mm-hmm. place, I guess. Because I don't know, I mean, like, I'm ho- hopefully this guy's making money. Like, I really hope he's making money because otherwise this is miserable. Um, but sometimes I feel like there's that little, there's that little, it it just changes. And we've noticed it with like gelato shops. I think we talk about it all the time where it goes from like. This one small place that's visited but not that visited that's like really just good and as soon as it gets slightly bigger it's just like oh they stopped doing something and now mm-hmm. it's not as good and we saw i think there's a pizza very famous we keep mentioning it in naples of sorbillo we've gone there for like eight years and literally eight years ago it was phenomenal tiny you know and and just insane and then it as it expanded it got really not good for a couple of years mm-hmm. i think now it's it's actually quite good um but it doesn't quite feel as like how it did back when it was one store mm-hmm. and, and and still very famous but but yes you know very well known by italians lesser known by people from outside of italy and now it's just now they have like one in like new york city they yeah, have one in la it's just now. like oh my god they have yeah it's like cookbooks and this and that so that's all to say is we really like this place and it kind of very much feels like um uh i don't know it's like it just it feels in that really precious place where it's like hasn't yet quite exploded but it very could definitely get there one day because it's yeah. just simply like i mean genuinely really good sandwich uh yeah. feels like good quality ingredients and uh also it's like super um centrally located mm-hmm. i mean within maybe two minutes at the most you're at the duomo um a minute you're at dante's museum i mean there's there's kind of little shopping areas all around wherever you are um so i think it's a very uh centrally located sandwich place as well yeah absolutely and in fact um 
we stayed quite centrally whenever we visited with my mom and we brought the sandwiches back up to the That's hotel room. We did. Um, just because we were exhausted. Um, so easy to get something to go as well if you if you want to do that. That's a very good point. That is. So that's our favorite sandwich shop, if you cannot tell. I think we spent like 15 minutes on this one. <laughs> we really um, let's talk about pastries. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun little like segue. I like okay. pastries. So we have, well, if you have it after you have your sandwich. That's a good point. We have or, it before sandwiches. Before, or both. We have them all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, we we a do a lot people. of munching when we travel. <laughs> well, it's like, I think we do small foods all the time like yes. we do like we split a lot of small things luckily we, throughout we the day. split a lot of things yeah. i think if you're by yourself if i were by myself i'm like okay it'd be like even though we today we had a tiramisu and it was just like if it was by myself i'm like i'm it's too much yeah i'm gonna go into shock but it's kind of like <laughs> we get to split but then it's also like i didn't have that much i could get like a gelato in a couple minutes i can you know mm-hmm. go back for tiramisu if you strong armed me into a gelato and two tiramisus today I can't believe that happened. That was amazing. It's her birthday, so I think we get a free pass on this, everyone. Okay, let's talk about the pastries in Florence. Let's talk about those pastries. Okay, so we have, I would say, two favorite places for pastries. that are Two fun. very different, but very, very favorite. Very different, yes. Very different, but very favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk about Fedora first. Beautiful. Okay, so Fedora is a cafe. Um, they do actually have lunch uh, options, pastas, uh, sandwiches. We haven't had that, but... Um, they're a cafe with all of these amazing pastries that are all made by the students in the pastry school. French pastries, I believe, predominantly. Predominantly, yeah. We had uh, a brownie. Well, as I well. think not French, I guess what? Viennese? What do we call it in English? Viennese. Viennese? Yeah. Okay, so I they're from so. Vienna, so it's like uh, croissants, spanish, um, the, the flaky rolled things that you mm-hmm. might find in a French or a Viennese, a Venezuela. Venezuela. I want to say Venezuela, but I don't think that's the right word. You're thinking of Vichy I'm thinking of Vichy Okay, so they're not sauce? that. Is it fishy? Is it fish soup? I think so. Um, so it's not that. Okay. It's, it's But the beautifully flaky, buttery pastries that one thinks about and dreams about when they go to Paris. Yeah. And uh, so we walked by it probably once thinking, oh, it would be so nice if we could eat there. Wow, it looks so fancy. <laughs> Mainly because of that beautiful garden they courtyard. Beaut- yeah, so when you, uh, when you see it, there is a large... Uh, what, what would you call it? Not a domed door, arch, arch doorway. Um, and then when you enter that to the right is the entrance to the cafe. And then beyond that is this beautiful garden uh, where you can sit while you eat. Um, and you can see that from the street, just through the doorway. A little portico. Um, Oof, fancy words. SAT words. <laughs> and uh, it looks really fancy and it looks expensive. So we didn't go in the first time. Uh, the second time we saw it, we were visiting with your dad and... Right? And I think the, um, was it the Airbnb owner who was like, you guys yeah. should try that pastry, pastry shop next door. It's mm-hmm. like this like, student pastry mm-hmm. thing. And your dad was like, I'll pay. Don't worry. And so he went in because uh, he can afford it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, but he offered to pay. And it was delicious. It was wonderful. Your brother and your dad, we, we all enjoyed got it. four coffees and four pastries. Mm-hmm. And it was how much? I think it was nine euros. And your dad was like, is this, uh, is this for mine only? Is this for everybody's? And it was for everybody's. It's just he very He felt bad. He came out and he's like, Nathaniel, can you, can you go back in there and ask them if it's, do I, do I need to pay more? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I paid enough. And I'm like, well, we should run away. <laughs> uh, no, we looked at the receipt and it was like, wait, that's for four pastries and for four. And I think we went back later that afternoon because I was like, okay, we're only here for a few more nights. We're going to go here as often as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we did ask. And I think it's all pastries or all the baked pastries, I should mm-hmm. say, are one euro each. If that's still accurate. If yeah. that's still accurate. Because that's how I think it was because we went, I mean, two days ago mm-hmm. and we had two pastries, a coffee and a bottle of water. Mm-hmm. And I think we paid five. And I ended up doing the math. I think we ended up doing the math that it was like, um, three for the coffee and the bottle of water, and then like, yeah, two for the pastries or something like that, or maybe one fifty for the pastries. Either way, insanely cheap. Mm-hmm. It just in the, I, let me rephrase this: insanely in line with other Italian pastries from yes. typical cafes. Yes, that's a good way of putting it um, because they look like they would be much more expensive than that. Um, and so basically, whenever we went this past Monday, I asked um, because we we just arrived like close to lunchtime because we shook the nine something train and there was a delay blah 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 so um there were a lot of pastries gone by the time we had arrived um i thought the previous time that we went um 
almost a year ago now, that there was a second batch of pastries that came out in the afternoon. Um, but when I spoke to someone this past time, I'm just this Monday, um, she said that they only come out in the, the morning, which is neither here nor there necessarily. Um, but it's just to say, like, we're talking about after lunch, having, like, if you after after your sandwich, you can go for pastries, but mm-hmm. it really might be more of a for breakfast go. And yeah. then if you're okay missing pastries you know, go back for coffee kind of thing and mm-hmm. see if they have something. Yeah. Um, not that you, everyone needs to go twice in a day. We yeah. are crazy people, um, <laughs> to be clear. But again, it is, uh, well, I, I, mean, I think one of the, you, and you mentioned there's students. Mm-hmm. And it's something to keep in mind is that they're all really good pastries. And sometimes they're left in the oven a little long. That is true. It's it's a bit of a hit or miss on whether they're going to be a little extra toasty. Yeah. Um, we have had some that are perfectly cooked. We have had some baked. Uh, we have had some that are a, li- a little brown, um, and but think, still good. And I'm curious too, like um, we've obviously had a couple of heat waves and this and that, and we went in the fall last time, which we kind of just forgot until we got there this time. And it was like, is this really hot for Florence? And then we're like, what are we talking about? We're in October last time. Uh, and that can affect obviously a lot of things like rolling out the, the, the croissants and stuff because it should be cold to frozen when you roll it out. And I imagine if it's difficult to cool uh, anything in the, in the mm-hmm. middle of summer, it's going to be difficult for sure to cool a pastry room. Um, I mean, just because it's not in the basement, it's like, you know, on the second or third floor. Uh, so that is to say, it's like, I think this one too, it was like, it felt a little bit like, oh, last time was a little better. But they're really very worth, um, I think, the trip. Uh, Absolutely. They're delicious. Plus, it makes it really easy because it is pretty much right in the middle between the Galleria Academia and the Duomo. Yes. So if you're like looking at the David and you're like, you know what, we can go for a coffee. Or if you're looking at the Duomo, you're headed to David and you're like, we can go for a coffee. It's right there. Same street. Uh, I say same street because it's, it's called um, Via Ricasoli. And it's like the the, not the main street, but it's. I mean, actually, it looks like a tiny little neighborhood street, funny enough, but it is the street between the Galleria and the Duomo. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a number of other little things on that street. I mean, it's a quite a, I mean, our favorite gelatria, which we'll talk about in a second, is on that street, um, as well as, like, you know, Italy Kitchen. Like, it's the kitchen yeah, restaurant for Italy, for which is, right. uh, if you've never heard of Italy, which we really hadn't until we went to New York once, it's like a bunch of Italian food in a supermarket. Yeah, That's but a it kind of looks, like like looks like a mall or a... Yeah, yeah it's like a really gorgeous. Imagine all the gourmet Italian food that some of it is like, for sure not for Italians because you're like, there's no way to eat this. Yeah, it's like a it's like a expanded Whole Foods or Fresh Market. That's a good way of putting it. That's kind a really good way of putting with it. With World Market, wow, capitalism in America. That's um. you're nailing it. You're knocking it <laughs> out of the park though. And then because there's a bunch of like there's a bunch of like I mean in the big store stores there's like the uh, place where you eat fish and there's the roasted teria, which is a bunch of roasted stuff and there's the pizza area and mm-hmm. there's the pasta area and it's like three is that or how four the one in, in florence is we're describing the one in rome no right now. because the one in florence is only the kitchen so it's okay. just like a restaurant but like okay. i guess with italy products um so you can't mm-hmm. actually see what else they have um but you can eat the food well and speaking of too this is the same thing with the, the cafe uh fedora it's because it's the students they also do it's i think it's a daily menu so it doesn't, and maybe it's more, maybe it's like a weekly menu, but we looked, we looked at the menu and it says today's food that are being cooked by the students are blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it seems to be like whatever they're focusing on that day is what you're going to get. Uh, and again, I mean, they're, 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 I think the prices are a bit cheaper, I would say, um, than most of the dishes. Most of the dishes in Florence are like 12 to 15 for lunch and maybe like 15 to 20 for dinner. Uh, not that mm-hmm. there's lunch and dinner places or dinner prices, but like. A lot of the restaurants we saw um, that are open for dinner are not open for lunch. And then a lot of the ones that are lunch focused aren't necessarily open for dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one is about, I think, nine for a dish, which does make it a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you run the risk of like maybe somebody oversalted it or forgot to salt the water or something like that. So it's just like, eh, it's good, but could be better. But you're kind of getting that like, I mean, you're helping out a burgeoning young student. Uh, it does, I will say, it's funny, we talked about this in the, the first time we recorded this episode. Um, it feels a little weird going there because everybody there speaks English. They're all, almost all of them, I think, are non-Italian. Yeah, I many, mean, the, many of them are American. Yeah, many, many of them are American. And you'll, when you go outside in the little beautiful patio, it is like kind of, it's almost like being in some sort of weird American school campus because you're just yeah. like, it's a bunch of people speaking English and they're all... Well, I was gonna say like five years younger than me, but they're they're in the mid early twenty mid mm-hmm. to early twenties. There are more students this time. I don't know if there's a certain 
school calendar yeah. thing situation happening. Um, sometimes we've been and there are several Americans, but they're tourists or or sometimes the garden is almost empty and it's just us. This time, uh, maybe it was just a, a break between classes. I don't know. There were a bunch of young students chit-chatting on their laptops, but it wasn't anything that like hindered the experience in any way. It's just, no, it just is kind of a space warp instead of a time warp sometimes. Yeah. And I think also too, if you, and it's a good play. I mean, like I, a lot of, you and I felt like sometimes when we travel, we get a little like not homesick, but certainly like, I don't know. It's a, it's nice to sometimes overhear English and you're just like, oh, that was actually kind of nice. Um, so if you're feeling like that, if, if Florence is not the beginning of your trip or if it's like the middle or even the closer to the end and you're just like, I'm kind of like missing home a little bit. It is kind of cool to hang out because then you're just for a brief second, you feel like you're back in, in America. If you're from America, I should say, if you're not from America, it's not going to feel like home at all. Yeah. You're like, what's with all these Americans here? Um, so I will say it's maybe a little bit different. Um, but I will say the, the pastries are genuinely, while they are hit and miss, they are genuinely really delicious. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about our other uh, other favorite our pastry other favorite shop. pastry shop. Let's do it. Yeah. What is it called? It's called the for f- uh, Forno Sartoni. S-A-R-T-O-N-I. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I think it's basically, um, I'm sort of hesitating on it because it's a forno, which means it's more of a, uh, like a bread bakery. And they have bread, and they have a lot of bready pastries. Mm-hmm. They do have, and I say bready pastries, I mean like, um, well, cookies, um, breads that are like sweet breads. Mm-hmm. Also um, rolls, rolls that are savory. Uh, that are savory. They do have pizza Italia, which we talked about in the Rome episode. It's just like pizza in a big pan, and they cut it to size. I don't know how good that is. We have not tried it mm-hmm. from there because we were eating sandwiches in, in Florence. Yeah. Um, but it's, so it's not, it's, when I say it's a different pastry place, it's not like Italian pastries, like the dainty ones and the beautiful ones. Yeah, the... they're not like highly finished, very decorated, small bites. Yeah, it's just a very classic uh, Italian, and, and I would say probably even Flor- Florentinian because they do have the, um, sc- uh, what is the, schiacciata? Is that the bread? Mm-hmm. Okay, they have the schiacciata with the um, the grapes mm-hmm. that uh, con uva uva. That's a say grape mm-hmm. in Italian. What was that great bread that um, you got the other day? I don't remember. She told me the name of it, and, and one of the sort of major downfalls I think of a lot of Italian baked goods is they all have a specific name. Like yeah. they can't just say it's a you know it's bread with but this. But they also it's... don't all have a sign like a oh, little yeah. like Almost a little none tag. Of them have a sign. Yeah, yeah, so you have to ask about what it's called, and if you don't write it down. Gone forever. And this one was a raisin and rosemary bread. It was so good. It was, I mean, I, and again, the first time we've we've gone there five or six times, seven times, and it's like you think each time it's something a little bit different. There they have. Yeah. I mean, they have like classics, and then they have like oh some other things. Uh, and this one was just like wow, that's like weirdly good. Mm-hmm. It's a little mm-hmm. sweet plus the, the rosemary plus the um, the raisins. And they have tarts and pies, and yeah. I believe you can get slices of things. Maybe not of everything. That's a good point. I think it's slices slice of the of tarts. Some of the tarts. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got a couple. I got like a slice of something for your mom once. I almost uh, got a slice. They had a chocolate. Oh my pie. god, that was beautiful. That just looked like pure chocolate, and then so like a little good. crostata. Yeah. Um, but if you want, like, a, if you're hankering for like a classic Italian experience, if you want like a little bread roll, bring back to the uh, hotel or Airbnb. If you're just looking for something to put lunch on. Um, Anything like that. I mean, we, you know, if you if you're going on a train trip the next day and you need food, it's a good yeah. place to stock up on little, you know, rolls and things. Um, that's a fantastic option. It's probably one of the best fornos in. We, we tried a number of fornos in Florence, and that's probably the only one like really worth mentioning, simply because it's one of the better ones that yeah, we've really been good. to. And again, centrally located. Oh, that's the other thing. It's right down the street from the Duomo as well, like mm-hmm. on a side street. But um, you could literally, I think, walk from that to the the sandwich place that we like. Um, mm-hmm. Which I keep messing up the name of it. I don't know why. Davina Thierry. Davina Thierry. Um, so it's kind of on a straight line. Not quite, but it's a straight-ish line between the two. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the covers of pastry places, yeah? Mm-hmm. That one deserves just as much talking about as Fedora, but it's just so nor- fairly normal that I don't have well, that many words it about too, it. It's, it's interesting because you and I have, I think, Fedora is kind of gone, become like abnormal for us. So I'm like, yes. it's French pastries made by a lot of Americans and foreigners. It's in a... You know, they got the courtyard. It's a whole thing. But then the, the other one, she's like, are you looking for classic Italian stuff? Mm-hmm. Look no, you know. Yeah. That, that, Does it look no classically further. Italian? Yeah. And that's kind of like what I think you and I is like, that's just a normal good bakery. Uh-huh. Um, that's someone would like recommend to people who are Italian, who are going to Florence, uh, who are like, haven't been here before, but looking like, where's the basics? And like, that's the yeah. Florida that you need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also like bread. Did you mention that? Yes, they okay, have bread. Okay. Yeah. You, you can buy just regular bread. Um, we've had, I think we've tried it. I think it's okay. I mean, it's good. It's not it's like, good. I mean, it's but it's like. 
yeah, we don't, we weren't really doing anything with it. We weren't, I mean, we were only in Florence, I think, for like four or five nights. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like, what do you need bread for? Yeah. Uh, we kept going yeah. out to eat or, you know, getting stuff from grocery stores. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on, other sweet stuff. Yeah, gelato. Gelato. So our favorite gelateria is La Strega Nocciola. Um, the location that we always go to is near the Duomo, but there are two others, right? I believe there's two others, one near the Ponte Vecchio and on one... the other side of the river. I think there's one on one, one, like one on either side of the river. Oh, okay. I think they're kind of, and again, they're all century located and they all kind of decorated the same, like in the sense of the like, exposed same aesthetic, brick yeah. wall, they have the whole thing. Um, they do serve their gelato out of the, the pozzetti, which is like the little, uh, stainless steel canisters. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than like the tubs. Yeah. Um, but... And that's something that you were talking to me about the other day is that it's a thing, what, in, in Tuscany, right? To do the mountains of gelato. Yeah. It's like what we've heard recently, um, which we always stay away from because it doesn't, it just kind of, when you get that sense of like, oh, that looks inauthentic, that's kind of how they look. Um, but you For said sure. the other day that there's um, this hullabaloo um amongst uh gelato makers because sometimes people will essentially cut corners cut costs and inject air mm-hmm. into the gelato to make it go farther and look fluffier and sometimes uh not necessarily every time but sometimes that is what you see piled up because they can get with a lesser amount of gelato they can get a higher stack um but by the time it gets to your cup or your cone it's all melty and full of air and i think it's kind of like I mean, not to start listing brand names in America, but like Briars, a lot of the Briars flavors are no longer ice creams. They're like frozen dairy dessert. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like you compare that to like the original Talenti, sort of not the new, a lot of the new ones are really weird and airy, but it's like the weight difference alone is sort of like, oh, or actually, you know, a great example, if you have a Costco, the Costco ice cream is fantastic. Like that is like the Kirkland ice cream is like amazing. It's very simple ingredients, um, but it's also quite heavy. And then you compare it to like two Briars and you're like, that's not what is, is this air? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of gelatos like that. We did talk about it, if you are curious, in our gelato episode, kind of what to avoid, such as you know, artificial colors, when it's piled up like that. And I think a big big part of it for us is it, it's gelato is almost something that doesn't need to be advertised. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like you don't need to advertise ice cream. If it's ice cream, people are going to come for it. It's yeah. ice cream. It's delicious. It's always delicious. <laughs> so it's kind of like when somebody is trying to advertise it, whether it's piling it up or putting a bunch of stuff on top of their, like, they put a bunch of like the, the the fruits or the this or the that on top of the gelato to kind of or like full candy bars or full candy bars like, it's yeah a Snickers gelato yeah it's kind of it, it sets off warning bells for me it's like when the ones the pozzetti uh, are ones you you can't see it so it's like it has to sort of stand on its own it has to stand just on flavor and if it's popular and stands just on flavor um, then you know it's probably pretty good yeah uh, because there's also like a very little to nothing to gain um, from from artificial colors because again no one can see it until it's in the cup so it's mm-hmm. like you know I mean what do you why would you artificially color something that no one's gonna see until it's too late until you yeah. paid for it um, so that's a classic one there are I will say like five or six good ones that we've heard about we just did not get a chance to try this time mm-hmm. um, we were a little sugared out after our, our pastry sessions <laughs> um, and we figured we'll just go to a classic get some sorbet um, but there are another five or six kind of well-known ones in Florence. Uh, though I, again, I do urge people like to kind of, uh, just check around or to find good ones. Cause it, it does, I think we've talked to people who are basically like, you know, I, the first gelato I had was great, but then it, I kept finding bad ones and it's just, we've had a lot of bad gelato in Florence. We have. And, and I think a lot of people have a lot of bad gelato in Italy just because it's, um, you just go for the one that's the closest to you when you want gelato rather than like. The two minute walk away and i think because now uh la strega Nocciola has three locations in florence it does make it a little easier to find um depending where you are you don't have to kind of go big walking for it but mm-hmm. if that's not something you want or if you tried that and you want something else i definitely urge you all to, to kind of look uh even just googling i mean i think there's a, probably a million articles on it um but, but our know, recommendation is la strega Nocciola. absolutely that's definitely yeah. like you can't go wrong basically like there might be better but you there's there's a lot worse. You certainly, I think you'll be happy with. I think you'll be very happy. We're with always happy with it. Sure yeah. So to finish up, I think we should talk about wine. Beautiful. Okay. So off the top, because I've just said wine and we're talking about Florence, let's talk about the wine windows, um, because they're famous now. Yeah. You may have heard of them. You may have seen little reels on Instagram, uh, because everybody takes a video. This is, I mean, I'm not like being grumps about it. I would take a video if I'd gotten a a glass of wine from a little window. Um, but so there are two, 
uh, in Florence, and they weren't actually running really before COVID. Um, yeah, it feels like during COVID they were allowed to start. I mean, they've been shut down for like 150 yeah, something. They're years. Very, they're very old. They're from the plague era, yeah. right? Um, to keep germs away, um, and then they were shut down for quite a long time, and then. Uh, when COVID happened, um, somewhere along the way, they were reopened because you could limit the amount of germs that were being spread. So, that's the idea, yeah. Yeah, so now there's two, and I'm going to look at my list and, and read them to you. So there's one called um, Cantina de Pucci, um, which is near the Duomo. We saw it, and I almost went by, but there was quite a long line. Um, and so it's this very cute little window. Like I said, everybody's taking pictures. And you get a... It's not a... Um, plastic or like compostable cup or anything. It's a wine glass. So yeah. you can't leave with it. Um, and it does not, when you purchase it, it does not guarantee you a seat. I don't think it even the... allows you to sit at the thing. I think the seat's oh, yeah. only for people for who people are actually like eating, eating there. there. Yeah. So there were a lot of people uh, hanging out on either side of the street with their glasses of wine, leaning up against the wall jauntily. I mean, it looked very nice. Um, but it's a bit limiting. Well, kind of also seemed a little bit like everyone was excited to get it and to film the person handing them the glass. And then they're like, cool. But I can't leave here until yeah, I'm done with yeah, it. Yeah, now I'm just drinking my wine standing up. Yeah. <laughs> Which so is fine if that's what you want to do. Well, it's also, I think, um, oh, there are, so there's another location you've got to mention, isn't there? Yes, no, before I forget. So it's called um, Bucchetta del Vino. Um, and it's between the Piazza della Repubblica and the um, Santa Maria Novella. Okay, so it's like on the way to and from the, the train station. Mm-hmm. That one we did not see, um, mm-hmm. but we, we did obviously go by the, the, the Pucci one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like my segue was to the, the other wine place that we actually quite like is uh, Vino Divino, mm-hmm. um, Divine Wine. Um, and that is a place that you can buy wine to walk around with, little glasses mm-hmm. of wine. And it's 150 150 You cannot beat 150 for a glass it's of wine, amazing. folks. Um, so you should talk about Vino Divino since that is your, your place. I love Vino Divino. Um, and Neri is the owner, uh, proprietor. Um, he's super, super nice. Uh, he knows all about all of the wines that they have. And something that you point out to everybody that we recommend this to is that it's not, I mean, it's definitely local wine, but it's, it is limited. It's not like he has a giant warehouse. It's a small little shop. Um, and it's not all from the Tuscany region because yeah. a lot of local people also shop there and you don't always want wine just from where you are, you know, so there's um, Sicilian wine, there's uh, wine from all over Italy. I think recently it's like, has signs up that he's like now has some Sicilian wines. So that's been his big thing. Yeah. Like Sicilian wines. Mm-hmm. But he knows, I mean, he'll recommend to you, and he speaks English. Um, like fluently, not like yeah. just like, oh, I have a couple words. Like, yeah, yeah, very yeah. fluently. Um, and, and he'll recommend to you, you know, ask you what kind you want, recommend, you know, his favorite or whatever you're looking for. And it's um, vino sfuso. So it's, it's all in either boxes or like casks. Um, or there's some in the wall as yeah, well. Yeah, must I don't be know a keg or something. Comes, yeah, where it comes from. Um, but he'll fill up a, a glass bottle for you, and he has a little what do you call it? A little corking machine, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. That he kind so, of just... like in in Rome, where we get our wine of uh, Spuso, it's just <laughs> giant liter and a half plastic bottles with, with a, a cap top. on it, and they're like, "Good yeah. luck, take that home <laughs> yeah. to you." Yeah. But uh, but his looks a little nicer. Uh, it's a gla- regular glass wine bottle. Uh, which is, I know, I mean, I think it's also, it's, um, it plus the, the little, the little plastic cups you can take with you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, instead of getting the, um, I mean, this is what I do. Instead of getting the glass glass of wine that you can't leave with from the window, when you go to Vino Divino, it's a plastic or compostable, I think it's a compostable cup, um, that you can just walk around with because in Italy, uh, I don't know where you're from, uh, listener, but uh, where we're from in Savannah in the U.S., everybody, a lot of people come there because there are open container laws and you can drink walking down the street. In Italy, you can drink walking down the street. Um, All of Italy. Yes. So you can just take your little cup of wine with you. Yeah, and wherever you want to go. Plus, Mm -hmm. and I think, as you mentioned, it is small. It, and they probably is like a Chianti or something like that if you were looking for like uh, local regional. Oh, yeah, he definitely has um, local stuff, yeah. But it is, like, and it's like also like when we say wine shop, it isn't like um, there are some wine shops that you go it's into. It's not like, yes. There are, private vineyards and yeah. that kind of thing. This is more like I want to walk around with wine or I just want to have a little bit of fun, get some kind of fun wines, mm-hmm. have them bottle them for me and take them back. Yeah, and he's um, not like connected to any vineyard. Like the, the yeah. ca- 
ca- cave? What are they called? C- caves in France? What is that called? Yeah. Cava? Cave? Non yeah, so. there's a French word that I'm not remembering. Um, and I believe a lot of those are associated with specific vineyards. Um, he's not. He's just got a, a small selection of nice wines, and they're not very expensive. I think I paid three euros for... I think it was 480 for a bottle. Okay, for the 700, 750 milliliter. milliliter. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, basically he charges you for the, the wine. I think it was like three for the wine, and then 180 for the bottle, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Something like that. Uh, so you can obviously keep bringing the bottle back and, uh, you know, rinse it out and he'll refill it. Um, and it's a little bit, I mean, depending on like which one you got, I think that one was a little bit more expensive. There's ones that were a little cheaper. Um, mm-hmm. They're all done by the liter, though. So, I mean, 750 milliliters is obviously under a liter, but um, he has bigger bottles and smaller bottles if you want like a 500 milliliter bottle of wine, like mm-hmm. a little personal bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, I mean, like genuinely, if you're, if you're interested in just, um, again, like, I only say because in Siena and in, in other parts of Florence, uh, even in like uh, San Gimignano, which we'll talk about in a later episode, there are these like really beautifully dedicated wine stores that are like hyper local, hyper regional. Mm-hmm. Um, they have all sorts of offerings and options and, you know, just things. It's just like, wow, you could really get, in, mm-hmm. you know, get crazy. Here. And also, I mean, if you're going to Tuscany, you, you might be taking a wine tour. And Absolutely. so you might want to be getting wine from the vineyard that you're going to. But I really highly me- recommend Vino de Vino. Yeah. If you're looking to walk around Florence with some wine, if you're looking to bring something back to your hotel room, to Airbnb, if you're looking just to be like, I want something kind of nice, simple, something to go mm-hmm. with, you know, some something dinner. Something affordable that's going to taste good. Yeah. Go be able to picnic. talk to the person. Neri at Vino yeah. de Vino is definitely, I think, the way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was, so far, it's like one of our favorite little wine places that we found in italy so yes, i highly absolutely. recommend it i think you do too i do too is that is that food we've been That's chatting for a long food time about florence food. i know it's this episode is already an hour and 11 minutes but uh we've been talking for a lot longer than that because we keep cutting things out mostly because <laughs> i kept mispronouncing bisteca a la fiorentina <gasps> you got nailed it. it um and before we let you all go i mean you can leave you could just end it right now yeah, i'm about to do another now. <laughs> affiliate marketing thing so just go ahead and end it if you want to end it <laughs> Uh, but, if but it like, would help if you do listen. It would be amazing if you listened. Um, if you'd like to support us, the podcast, Only a Bag, um, specifically Darcy and Nathaniel, which is the beautiful faces behind Only a Bag. Mm-hmm. I think they're beautiful. We're the only there. faces behind Only a Bag. There's not like some yeah. people behind the curtain here. We have a cat in the corner that we're house sitting. That's so. Yeah. That's the other person behind Only a Bag currently. Uh, she came in and knocked over the, the filter for a minute. That's mm-hmm. also it she took some time. She's from management. Yeah. She's, she's from management. You can tell all those management <laughs> material behaviors. <laughs> But if you'd like to support us, um, there's a link in the description uh, for tickets, which is what, how you can kind of buy tickets uh, for any event, any gallery, any museum in um, Italy. And I say event, I mean like like ideally art stuff, not music stuff. Unfortunately, Ticketmaster has their little claws and everything all over the world. But mm-hmm. uh, tickets is a great way to buy tickets for the Uffizi, for the Galleria Academia, for the uh, PT Palace, uh, for, if you're going to Rome or Naples, you know, I mean, for, for Pompeii, wherever you're going in Italy, you can buy tickets for the event um, on tickets. The link is in the description below. We get a little cut from any sale that uh, we make or slash that if you click on the link. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we would deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate um, that if you are going to Florence or Italy and you use the link below to book your tickets, uh, we'd really absolutely love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you'll follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast, that is also super, super helpful. Yes, please follow and leave a review um, if you liked it. Uh, if you didn't like it, I, you could also leave a review. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'd prefer like a just like a direct message so we could like Yeah, if you have any recommendations or questions, please feel free to send us an email. Yeah. Um, besides that, though, uh, thank you all so much for listening to our, our long uh, podcast on food in Florence. Yeah, we're probably going to go talk more about food to each other in probably just a after second. this well it's dinner time so we gotta get we gotta most of what we participate in is food it's a very food oriented life eating that's what we do yeah so uh <laughs> thank you all so much for listening yeah thank you we'll talk to you next time and we hope to see you soon we gotta learn how to end these things <laughs> yeah we do we'll talk to you later <laughs>